University Circle is the intellectual and cultural center of Cleveland, Ohio. It is the home to world-renowned institutions such as the Cleveland Clinic, the Clear Museum of Art, and Case Western Reserve University. These are the crown jewels of Northeast Ohio and the Greater Cleveland area. A University Circle could also be considered a rose among the thorns when looking outwards into the surrounding neighborhoods. The neighborhood of Huff can be seen as the opposite of University Circle, with its abandoned and neglected houses which awaits their turn to be demolished or saved. Huff has an air of being condemned the moment it was built. It is a constant reminder how dark University Circle casts its shadow and the stark separation of decades old. There has always been a divide, often physical, but mostly a social economic divide, between the expansion of institutions and rapidly shrinking lower class African American territories. With the demographics rapidly changing in Cleveland, governmental and private institutions attempt to plan and prepare for these changes while protecting their own collective interests. Along the way, the Cleveland Planning Commission and the University Circle Development Foundation drew lines and borders to turn University Circle into a citadel, but resulted in unintentional consequences. The fortress like boundary lines of the neighborhoods of Huff and University Circle are hard to tell. You have to be on the other side of the street in order to see it. Huff was one of the most prominent neighborhoods in Cleveland, where in the 1920s was home to white middle class families. Huff is in close proximity to Euclid Avenue to the south, which was nicknamed Millionaire's Row due to the wealthy white Cleveland industrialists. This gave Huff an excellent reputation as being high end and safe place to be. Huff had Rockefeller Park to the east, East 55th Street to the west, and Superior Avenue to the north, all surrounded by wealthy, middle, and working class whites. The district of Cedar Central seemed to be the ideal area of Cleveland, but it would not last forever. By the 1930s and 1940s, more housing programs divided the houses in Huff into multifamily housing in order to keep up with the demand of housing for Americans. The subdivided houses in the neighborhood made it appealing for migrant African American workers from the South and Mountain Whites from the Appalachians looking for work during World War II. The socioeconomic standing with the residents of Huff in the 1940s was dynamic depending on where you were in the geographic location of Huff. The outer edges were a mix of white and black middle class families in single family homes, and moving inward were lower class African Americans in apartment buildings. After World War II, Huff went under radical demographic changes, which left the Cleveland Planning Commission scrambling for the next decade. In 1950, over 95% of the residents of Huff were white, working class skilled laborers who were in managerial positions. Five years later, the white population dropped to only 40%. By 1957, there were only 25% of whites living in Huff. Along with the dwindling white population in Cleveland, the housing in Huff began to slowly decay and fall into neglect. In December of 1950, the Cleveland Planning Commission made a citywide plan to introduce massive urban renewal and city revitalization. House fate was less severe than places like Garden Valley. According to the 1950s plan document, Huff was to be considered a conservation area in which, quote, the neighborhood should get together to work out a program of modernizing both houses and public facilities, end quote. It seemed like a good plan, but the heavy hand of public interest groups and university circle would ultimately be Huff's undoing and demise. University Circle is one of the most unique places in the American urban landscape, and the fact that it's considered to be a city within a city, and completely separate from downtown Cleveland and its adjacent neighborhoods. This stark separation was established by the collective interests of several private institutions that included Western Reserve University, Case Institute of Technology, Cleveland Clinic, and Mount Sinai Hospital. Together, they formed the University Circle Conference Committee in 1951 in order to reverse the onset of urban decline and decay from areas such as Little Italy to the east and up to the west. University Circle leaders were greatly concerned with the mass immigration of African Americans from the south entering the hub, making University Circle an undesirable place for education and healthcare. Circle leaders needed a means to create a defense against the encroaching urban decay and growing black population of Huff. The Adams, Howard, and Greeley Plan of 1957 gave the UCCC a chance to reorganize into the University Circle Development Foundation, UCDF. Since Huff was in need of major renewal, the plan recommended that Eastern Huff properties were to be held in trust for future institutional expansion. With the 1957 plan, University Circle would rebrand Cleveland, stave off deindustrialization, stop the spread of urban decay and restore Cleveland's urban greatness. The plan ultimately failed due to the important ruling of eminent domain bases which halted the plan. 
Later, in 1959, the Housing Act was passed in the Ohio Assembly, which gave cities funds for urban renewal projects in blighted areas. Cleveland revealed the University of Euclid plan, which would reinvest and renew the Euclid Avenue corridor between University Circle and downtown Cleveland, which would bring new businesses, hospitals, housing, and educational facilities. Under Section 112 of the Housing Act, the city of Cleveland would claim the money spent by the universities for their own expansion as part of its contribution to the urban renewal. The plan called for the removal of Negro families in order to place institutions on the defensive against urban decay by expanding outwards. This was met with great public outcry and seemed to be doomed from the start. From inadequate administrators, planning, and strong public pressure, the hopes of rehabilitation was dashed as hundreds of more houses deteriorated beyond repair. The sudden cancellation of the University of Euclid project and a sudden blowout of investors left several neighborhoods in further ruin, none more so than Huff. With a higher African-American population and the slowly decaying houses, the residents of Huff became angered by the lack of municipal services, overcrowded, and the lack of better housing. As racial tensions reached its breaking points in the 1960s, city planners such as Michael Haberman and Oliver Brooks warned circle leaders of the impending violence of the suppressed black population. In order to appease the Huff residents, circle leaders hired black liaison personnel between Huff and University Circle. This brought more attention to the fact that the Huff residents still didn't have adequate housing. Helping to ease tension, UCDL built the Wade and Springbrook apartments to house the black population. When word got out that whites were living in the new apartments, this was the last straw for the suppressed black population and retaliation was near. On July 18, 1966, tensions between Huff and University Circle reached its climax after Circle leaders installed their own police force and after whites moved into housing that was rightfully for the African-American population of Huff. Circle police received word that the rioters were heading towards them. A group of about 100 African-Americans marching two abreast was advancing from Huff towards University Circle. Fearing that the rioters would assault University Circle, Circle police launched a three-hour strike on the rioters, meeting them at East 73rd Street few blocks west of the University Circle border. 730 National Guardsmen were called to University Circle, another 1,700 to patrol the neighborhood in order to quell the riot, but to mostly protect the University Circle, Shaker Heights, and Lawrenceville Heights. Over a span of six days of rioting, four people were killed, 30 critically injured, 300 arrested, and roughly 250 fires were reported. After the riot, an investigative grand jury concluded that the Huff riots were not premeditated and the underlying cause for the riot was based on African Americans' pent up anger over racial inequality and inadequate housing. City and circle leaders tried to make amends with the communities, but the damage was done. By the late 1960s and early 70s, University Circle and UCDF were at crossroads between two different realities. The first of which is having University Circle be, quote, a place that attracts and holds the dynamic leaders, and in turn keeps Cleveland an outstanding place to work, live, and raise a family, end quote. But the harsh reality is that the city of Cleveland was plagued by the physical and psychological scars of deindustrialization, depopulation, failed urban renewal, two riots, and the widely publicized Cuyahoga River fire. The white suburban population was afraid for their safety and well-being while in Cleveland. The overwhelming urban decay, fear of crime, and the memory of the Huff riots made it hard to justify white middle-class families to make the trek from the safety of the suburbs to the University Circle. In 1970, the University Circle Development Foundation reorganized into University Circle Incorporated, UCI, in order to shed its fortress mentality towards surrounding neighborhoods. The first step in making amends with adjacent communities was UCI collaborating with Citizens for Better Housing and Homes for Huff to plan and execute the Community Circle Estate Development, which featured townhouse clusters and 10-story apartment complexes. But UCI would also take advantage of the urban decay in the Huff's edges and allow private institutions to expand the campuses into Huff. The Cleveland Clinic took advantage of this expansion and added four city blocks on the north side of Euclid Avenue and expanded two city blocks westward on Euclid. The outward expansion was justified by Huff property values at an all-time low, and the houses were either condemned or slowly decaying. Today, the only consistently vibrant area of Cleveland has always been University Circle. University Circle is the lifeblood of Cleveland, bringing in doctors, intellectuals, and engineers. Suburbanites enjoy visiting the museums and severance hall to be entertained and expand their knowledge. 
rest of Cleveland, however, will forever live within the shadows of downtown and university circle.